Hello, boys and girls, how are you today? I hope you are great. I'm going to read an history for you, and then we are going to do a quiz. So please, listen carefully all through, all right? Let's start. First, we found the front cover of our book, and there we can find very important information, like the title of the book. Is it Beatrix Potter, scientist, the author of the book, Lindsay H. Metcalf, and the illustrator, Juni Q. And the other part is the back cover, where we can find briefly history of the book. You might know Beatrix Potter as the woman who wrote your bedtime histories, but there is more about her history. You might know this girl or who will, who she'll become someone who make picture of cuddle animals and writes your bedtime histories. But there is more to her history. She observes questions, collects, records. Beatrix is a girl of science, even if she might not know it yet. See her there, giggling and splashing in the step of the Wilson's postman? His dirty boots carry him on mill routes past miles of mushroom and moose. He can't help but look and learn from the lush landscape etching the Scottish Highlands. Nature's in Kent's Beatrix too. She absorbs lessons on art and photography, so she can capture every rock, every flower, everything. This way, she can take Scotland home. Back on the ox of London, Beatrix sneaks nature inside, past her mother, past the staff, a bit older now. Beatrix and her brother Bertram fill their nursery with bunnies and bats and newts, snakes and frogs and mice. But when the animals die, after she cries, she removes their flesh to admire their bones. There is care in every measurement from head to fingers to tail. Beatrix draw them again and again, outside and in. That's science, boys and girls. Now, a young woman, Beatrix stood her specimen in London and set off into the countryside with her family. She grabs her stick book and runs through Northern England and Scotland, eyes open to the world so wide. Always she wants to copy any beautiful object which strikes her the eye. Sometimes she adds a twist of whimsy. Always she writes. Look there, what does Beatrice see? Tiny fungi people singing and moving and dancing. She blinks away the vision of fairy trotting among the tall stools, but thousands of mushrooms they remain. Joy of joys, she writes. They hold mystery on their own. She peers closer and sees the colors. She slices, sketches, and scoops every gill, every scale, every spur. The microscope reveals a new world. Beatrice cannot stop drawing. Who will understand? Probably not her parents. They have equipped her with cameras and experiences and tutor. But the school is for Bertram. Who will understand? 
The Scottish postman, of course. The man she knew when she was little more than a spur herself. The shy postman who stashes plants in his satchel so he can study them at home. Beatrix and Charles McIntosh discuss how to draw dainting details under the microscope how to classify each fungus by name. They promise to share their work. The Atrix train returns to the city. Soon, a piece of Scotland arrives in London. Beatrix tears open the package from Charlie and inhales a mushroom essence of fresh cut eye. Curiously, strong and pleasant, she writes and paints the samples with delicate strokes. Then she mails her artwork to Charlie. Perhaps if Beatrix draw enough, learn enough, her art could fill a science book someday. It's acceptable for Victorian women like Beatrix to excel at painting. Beatrix hopes to earn money and freedom for her parents' rule. Even if by selling silly picture of rabbits wearing coats. Back in the country, Beatrix stuck up her starched dresses and trudged through the box, Gotlands, and dunk where mushroom bloom. She has questions. How do fungi survive the winter? Do they spread underground? Is it true that the spores sprout like seeds? She greets her parents' London kitchen in her hunger for answers. She concocts a solution to nudge the spores to life. Tolling day and night in her shakily lab, Beatrix zooms in with a microscope to check and record her specimens. She can test the breakthrough that is sure to come. Finally, yes! Spurs do sprout like seeds, and Beatrix is among the first to grow them in Britain. Before long, the sprout tangle in a network of filament called mycelium. This must be the underground form Beatrix envisioned. To be sure, she exhausts herself studying dense volumes on fungi, writing in German. Then Beatrix drove her finding for all of science to share. A prominent natural story society could publish her paper, but it's the 1890s, and this is London scientists don't allow women to join them. Beatrix believes her work is too important to keep to herself. She earns a ticket to enter the Royal Botanic Gardens, accused and mingled with some of Britain's best botanists. But most of the plant scientists there dismisses her as an amateur. Beatrix might not be a professional, but she has pluck. She returns again and again, at first jumping as a bunny, then growing braver like a bull. She knows of a well-published scientist who can help if she can convince him. Her hair pumped. She clutches her slide and marches up to George Massey, one of the people in charge of Q plant specimens. George has been trying to germinate spurs without look. He peers through his spectacle with uncertainty. George, 
cannot deny that the atric has sprouted more than 40 kind of spores. He decides to try her methods. Finally succeeds. But the next chapter is all there. Beatrix Potter steps into the sunshine and tries something else, something not altogether different. She pulls out an old letter, one with pictures. A young friend had been sick, sick in bed and needed some good cheer. Her bunny, her Peter Rabbit, looks so real on paper, he nearly hops off the page. This is no leap for Beatrix, even as she took away her funky paintings for good. She doesn't forget what she knows of nature. She follows her muse to a place where science informs art, a place of chemistry, grounded in fact. Beatrix has studied every detail of her world, small and big, flower and fungus inside and out, and molded it all into something new. So she could share it with you, all of you, and the whole world through. The end. I hope you enjoyed this story, boys and girls. Now we're going to do our quiz. Are you ready? I hope so. Let's start. Question one. What is the name of the girl? A. Beatrix or B. Leatrix? Well done. The name of the girl is Beatrix. Option A. Question two. Which is her pet? A. A ginger cat or B. A black cat. Correct. A ginger cat. Well done. Question three. Where did she spend the holidays? A. Scotland or B. Spain. Well done. The answer is A. In Scotland. Question four. Does she like to draw? A. Yes, she does. Or B. No, she doesn't. Excellent. A. Yes, she does. Question five. What is the profession of the old man with white hair? Do you remember? A. Fireman or B. Postman? It's a postman. Well done. Question six. What did she spread? Do you remember? A. Carrots or B. Spurs? Oh yeah, that's good answer. B. She spread spurs. Well done. Question seven. Where did she go to show her work? A. National Art Gallery or B. Royal Botanic Garden. Okay, that's the answer. Royal Botanic Garden. Well done. Bravo. And question A. What she did after? Do you remember? A. She wrote the tale of Peter Rabbit or B. She opened a bakery shop. Exactly! She is the author of one of those bedtime histories, The Tale of Peter Rabbit. Well done, boys and girls. Thank you very much. I hope you have enjoyed this story and our quiz. See you soon!